fruit, vegetables, grains. Every day, farmers churn out a staggering amount of food. But they couldn't do it without a crucial ally. The element, nitrogen. It's a key ingredient in the fertilizers that make fields much more productive. To feed a hungry world, we've spread nitrogen everywhere. But now, we're paying a price. It's like having a leaky pipe. We basically have a leaky pipe for nitrogen into the environment. That nitrogen can lead to toxins. It can also lead to fish kills. Why not clean up that pollution and do something useful with it too? A bold plan to pull nitrogen out of our water and put it back to work. In this California forest near Stanford University, scientists Will Tarpe and Lucas Dong are searching for something that none of us can see. It's the element nitrogen. And though it's a vital part of all living things, the way we've altered its place in nature is causing grave damage to the environment. The story begins in the early 20th century with a historic discovery. Farmers had long known that natural fertilizers, such as compost and manure, make plants grow bigger and healthier. That's because they contain a nitrogen compound called ammonia. But by 1900, traditional sources of ammonia were no longer enough. The world's population was exploding. The demand for food would soon exceed farmers' ability to grow it. There were fears of global famine. But in 1913, German scientists made a breakthrough. They figured out how to manufacture ammonia fertilizer in huge quantities. This is a wonderful process. It's like chemical engineering's hallmark discovery of the 20th century. It's the most impactful industrial process known to humankind. And that's because ammonia fertilizers have made it possible to produce food on a much bigger scale. So when you think about how do we feed 7.9 billion people, we couldn't do it without ammonia. But why does this seemingly magical compound also have a dark side? The problem stems from a simple fact. Not all of the nitrogen in fertilizers ends up inside plants. An estimated 50% of it, perhaps even more, remains in the environment. Some of it enters the atmosphere in the form of nitrogen gases that contribute to global warming. And a lot of the excess nitrogen runs off into rivers, lakes, and eventually the ocean. That steady flow of nitrogen stimulates the growth of algae, the plant-like organisms that live in water. This nitrogen is basically fertilizer for algae and water. It basically overfeeds the algae. As it grows and grows, huge colonies form that are known as algal blooms. The algae start consuming all the oxygen, and there's no oxygen left for all the other organisms. So other organisms like fish or crustaceans basically don't have enough oxygen to survive. It can also lead to these toxins that are produced by algae. Nitrogen is a runaway train, and this is a train we have to stop. And if we want to stop it, we need to be able to measure nitrogen in all its forms where, where we can't see it with our naked eye. In order to detect this invisible element before it causes harm, Will and his team are developing a nitrogen sensor. However, the electrodes are inside. <laughs> Today, Will and Lucas are testing it out. 
Okay, I see what you're getting at. We need like a micro pump in and out, or like a valve. Yeah. When the sensor is perfected, it will be able to transmit its readings to monitoring stations far away. The thing that excites me about this sensor is really its future applications. So we could put this sensor in water and leave it there for months, years before replacing it. And the reason that's needed is that most nitrogen uh, pollution, we can't really pinpoint where it comes from. And the sensor helps us see pollution before it happens and then deploy technologies there to clean it up. And one of those cleanup technologies is a process Will himself has developed. His new technique, which he calls electrochemical stripping, zeroes in on the nitrogen that's in water and then extracts it. Will sees a future where once nitrogen compounds are detected, his stripping technology will capture them. Then they can be reused to make more fertilizer or even ammonia-based cleaners. So in some ways, our job is really simple. It's to take, identify the context where a compound is causing harm and put that compound in a context where it can be good. I get most inspired when I'm out in the world thinking, what are the biggest problems that I want to see solved by the time I retire? And I want to try to remember the things I think are impossible now. I want to look back and say, oh wow, that's normal now. And I think that's what science can do.